DESI, which stands for the Dark Energy Spectroscopic Instrument, is a device, is an instrument that is mounted on the Mayel telescope in Arizona. It is designed to do a survey that will collect the positions and the speeds of galaxies in the universe. And so far it's collected about 14 million objects. And the goal is within the five years is to collect over 40 million objects in the universe. What it does when it makes this actually largest, it's the largest map of the universe, three-dimensional map in the universe, it is able to track down the expansion history of the universe and then probe and constrain the acceleration of the expansion of the universe. UT Dallas in all of this, uh, we have been involved for the last five years into uh, DESI and myself and I have also uh, three graduate students who work on different aspects of uh, DESI. We look into uh, translating the data into cosmological information about what the universe is, what, the, what DESI is telling us about the universe. And for example, I coordinate a working group called the Cosmological Parameter Estimation Group. Uh, it's a large group, so I coordinate that group. I co-chair this group. But also I do work myself. Uh, two days ago, I stayed until 3.30 in the morning doing calculations and writing and plotting stuff. Um, so I like to be very much hands-on, and that's the contribution of UT Dallas to DESI. DESI, with its data, is able to map the universe, is to map how the galaxies, they move their position and their speeds. And in doing so, it tracks the expansion of the universe. So in April, already uh, DESI spoke. It told us that what is causing the acceleration of the universe is not something that we thought it was, like the cosmological constant which was a dead end. It told us that the properties of dark energy are different from those of a cosmological constant. This is a huge, and if it's confirmed, and it, it's a huge to help us in this question. Now in this fall, the data is now telling us about the theory of Einstein of gravity. It's telling us that the the current data is all consistent with general relativity, the theory of gravity of Einstein. However, it is prudent to say that Dizzy is not saying that general relativity is the theory and is the only theory. So there is still room for other theories. However, as it is, the data from DESI is all in agreement with general relativity of Einstein, which is very important. We, since we have the data and we can do it, so a scientist is always after testing theories, validating them and so forth. So testing general relativity at cosmological scales is a, a good endeavor just by itself. Now, the real motivator to test ge general relativity at cosmological scale is that is the discovery of cosmic acceleration. That's the universe is expanding in an accelerating way. We do not know what makes the universe accelerate. So the first thing we think is that to test the model, to test whether we have the right theory in hands. And that was a big motivator to go and test general relativity at cosmological scales. So when we look at, for, at general relativity, the theory of gravity, when we discovered it about a hundred years ago, we never thought that a hundred years later, it's gonna make a huge difference for our GPS. If you don't program general relativity in it, 
you go, you go like to Austin, you come back, you want to go to your house with the GPS, and the GPS is off by 45 uh, kilometers, about 40 miles. Because every day it shifts with 15 kilometers, 10 miles, if you don't put general relativity of Einstein in it. When we discovered magnetic resonance, we never thought that it's going to serve for an MRI. So dizzy and understanding gravity in the universe allows us to understand the space and time, how gravity operates, and first of all, it gives us the, the satisfaction that we understand the universe better. But sooner or later, such discoveries will translate into things that will affect our everyday life. And this is one of them as well. Moreover, understanding gravity will tell us how the expansion of the universe is happening. For example, what we learned in April, we learned that the, what is causing the acceleration of the expansion of the universe might not be the cosmological constant that it, we thought it was for so many, for 25 years. So if dark energy is weakening as the indication from the April results, then in that case, the universe will stop expanding, will recontract on itself. This is a possibility, it's not the only possibility, but now it's possible before it was not in the last 25 years. And that it means that the universe will recontract and then eventually there will be an end to it. The next steps in this journey, in this wonderful journey, is that one, we, will, we are working on confirming and reinforcing the results from April. That is, the dark energy is something else than a cosmological constant. That is very important. Two, we will also, again, make the constraints on general relativity, on testing relativity. We will make the error bars smaller. In other words, we will have more stringent constraint on relativity. And three, really this is the next step is to understand, is to use the data, to use the results from DESI about dark energy and to try to find exactly which theories are actually, can give us the properties of this dark energy that we measured from DESI. And those are the three very important follow-up questions for the future. If we, if we understand what is causing cosmic acceleration, this may cause a paradigm shift in the entire cosmology, entire cosmology model. It may change our understanding of space and time entirely. After 25 years working on cosmic acceleration, in December 12th, it was a Tuesday, we were at a conference. When I looked at the data and plotting some plots from the data and see what they were telling us about the universe, that blew my mind. Because right away, I saw what the data was telling us and giving us already something that is not consistent with the cosmological constant. So, for somebody working on that for 25 years, it's, it, it was incredible. And I didn't think that that will happen in the lifetime of many of us. I was thinking that will happen like maybe decades, centuries later. But seeing only the possibility that this is happening right now was an incredible moment. So, my conclusion is that to tell to all the students, the young researchers in the world, is never give up on your dream and pursue your dream, work on it. Be ambitious, pursue your dreams with values, though. Values are very important, but go for it. Go for your dreams. That's my concluding statement.